Welcome back to Tomorrow Day Farms, guys. Uh, today we're going to do the questions we received. Um, there was actually quite, quite a few, so that was pretty cool. So Michael's going to start us off. Question number one. <laughs> how long have been together? I don't know how long we've been together. We've been married for five years, coming up six next July. And three years before that? Yeah, something like that. Eight, nine years, something yeah, like something that? Yeah, something like that. For her, it feels like forever? Mm-hmm. Some days. <laughs> Number two? Yeah. How did we meet? Um, I... <laughs> this is kind of a loaded question. Um, I was actually Michael's boss. And I was not supposed to fish off the company pier, but I did. Yes. I was his boss. We met at work down south. Yeah. It was fun. <laughs> um, three, how did we name our farm? Um, that was actually named after my dad. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, um, my dad had um, Alzheimer's. And he used to jumble up words all the time. And um, he loved the word tomorrow day. So he actually meant today, but he meant tomorrow at the same time. So he used to say tomorrow day. So we named the farm after dad. Um, and we named the firm, the first firm in 2014-ish, 2015. Yes. Something like that. And um, that was our private farm. That was our farm, not our sow barns or anything like that. No. Um, farming. How did we get into it? What have we done so far? <sighs> Lots. Um, farming, for me, I was a city boy. I was born and raised in the city. And then I, I, when me and Tracy were discussing everything, Back when we first got together, I always said I wanted chickens and cows and a goat and a pig and I'd call it Piggy Wiggy. Like it was ridiculous. But he had a lot of pipe, pipe dreams, guys. I did, yes, a lot. Like yes. he had no idea. No, but as a city person, you you don't. No, you don't. But the true farming, I would say, I did uh, shrimp farming. So we just I did that. For a job and then you guys know about the commercial piggy farming i did that for a couple years well more than a couple yeah well, yeah i did the shrimp for a couple years yeah but we we really dived into farming i've always been in farming um i went from like owning restaurants to needing to kind of slow down quite a bit because i was doing like 80 hours 90 hours a week in the in the restaurant business and I needed to slow down and so I started doing like summer jobs but I worked for the same people for like almost almost a decade um, on and off and uh, um, but my family has always been in farming um, from my from my grandmother like my grandparents this is all on my mom's side um, to my aunts and uncles and cousins, everybody has farms. So, um, for me, it's always been in my blood. It's always been something I wanted to do. And, um, of course, my mother thought I was absolutely a lunatic. But, um, yeah, always wanted to farm. Always wanted to, to do everything myself. So, that's kind of, it's just something I've always wanted to do. The thing that really pushed us to doing raising our own meat to raising like growing our own vegetables and sticking with that kind of route instead of grocery store was that documentary. Mm -hmm. F food Inc. Food Inc. Pushed us over the edge. Because mm -hmm. we were we were teetering on that space and we're like eh, but then we watched Food Inc. and then we just went okay no they're we're doing it all ourselves. And that's when we started going hardcore to find our own place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we always had farms. We always lived in the country. Yeah. But we didn't. We didn't do like. Well, we grew some of our own food, but not to the extent that we do we, now. 
Well, it did we were limited? We were very limited. Yeah, we had we had acres and acres of land, but everything had to have a barn on it. So yeah. made a big difference. Um, but really, the thing for me that really pushed me over the edge was watching my dad get very ill, and and doing research mm -hmm. and finding out that that disease it is very genetic we do know i do have the gene so one day i could lose my mind but um you can't dwell on that stuff and you do have to kind of move forward and i thought doing the research i found out i could slow it down by not eating processed foods things of that nature so that's why we also changed over and it's just healthier yes. to eat your own food because you know exactly what goes into that animal there's no or vegetable GMO or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, next question. This is more towards you because this is your realm. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you? Uh, how did you get into caning? Um, preparing. I'll start with prepping. My parents always prepped. It was always something they did. They always had like half a basement full of food. Um, when I was a kid. My mother literally canned and froze everything she possibly could. <laughs> literally. Corn. Yeah. Um, so that's where I got some of my skills from. But, I mean, that faded as all us kids grew and got out of the house. But Mom still always did a bit of canning. It was just never as... Extra. But, like, my mom and grandmother and my aunts, they don't proper... As we would call it, proper can. No. Um... But prepping wise, mom and dad always, always prepped, always. Uh, they had three freezers absolutely to the top full um, at all times. Extra all times. this, extra that. Yeah, like if toilet paper went on sale, say, dad would buy four. And then he would go back before the sale and get four more. Um, they always had lots and lots. So it was something, and I didn't even realize it when I was a kid because, well, you just don't realize those things. Um, canning, my family always canned. It was always something. Like, I have fond memories of the Crocs all being in Mum's, the back room, all lined up. You walk home from school and you walk into the smell of vinegar and pickles fermenting and um, tomatoes on the stove and whatever. Um, always something that was in our house. Always. Always canning. Always prepping. But we lived in the city. But... We went through a snowstorm, and there was always that was what triggered mom and dad to start doing that. Um, we we were th without hydro. Um, I, the, what do they call that? The snowstorm of '78 or something, and um, there was no hydro for like two weeks. So we were the only ones with a gravity-fed furnace, a fireplace, and a gas stove. So everybody went to our house, but. That's really, it's, it's all I know. But I learned how to do it the proper way. They just chose not to do that. Well, like paraffin wax on top of your tomatoes. I ate many a jar of those. And I'm still kicking. But I thought it was weird when mm -hmm. Tracy brought it up to me. I was like, what do you mean canning? So I went and got a can <laughs> of vegetables out of my cupboard. And I was like, here you go. <laughs> Or she's like, spaghetti sauce, and I went and got a jar of ragu. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me and went, you know. Like, my, Michael was raised completely different than I was. Um, I was raised very uh, meat, potatoes, and vegetables seven days a week. Mm -hmm. No fast food, no, no. no none of that stuff. Um, where Michael ate everything pretty much out of a box or a can. So when we got together is a very hard transition for him because I personally can I don't eat that way. And she I don't can't really I cook don't out of it. yeah I can't cook that way either. When she wants can like box food like craft in her home well, hamburger helper stuff like that, it's it's my night to cook. Well, those things are great to have in, in the house if your spouse isn't doesn't like to cook or whatever and you need a night off other than a freezer meal. I mean, that's just what, what we do. What do we got? Three three boxes of hamburger helper. It's not like an extreme thing. Hey, we have two cases of craft there. <laughs> uh, favorite thing? The can. Tomatoes. 
my interesting thing to can is anything new. Because mm. you get to I'm see, always changing. You get to see the change <coughs> from a couple years ago, even. Yeah. It's just... The pressure canner makes a huge difference. Mm. The reinvention of something... For me, it's always... You take a tomato, and you add everything it takes, and the end result is just fantastic. I, I love that part of it. Mm -hmm. I love watching it from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And there's times when, I, when I'm not doing anything, I'll sit there and I'll watch, and I'll, I'll actually peek at it more than I actually should mm -hmm. as it's b brewing down or whatever you want to... Cooking down. Cooking down. And I'm always constantly being yelled at to shut the lid because <laughs> it's interesting to me. Well, because it's all new to you. Mm -hmm. Well, the pressure canning thing was never in our house. That no. was never. Um, pressure that, canning is something that I learned on my own. That was new a couple of years ago. But my my mom loved the fact I could pressure can. She she loved to watch it. I used to have to take the pressure canner and everything into her house and pressure can for her because she liked to watch it. Oh, it's snowing. Mm. Why up north? Now this is a loaded question. Yeah. This is a difficult question. Well, um, we we kind of chose nor northern Ontario. Um, southern Ontario, guys, is super expensive to live. It's like the land prices, like for three acres of property, is over a million dollars. Yeah. So. And, and if you want to do what we wanted to do, we, we had to start looking outside our realm. So we started um, researching small, for two years. We actually researched areas. Small towns. We, small towns. We were looking at central Ontario for a while mm -hmm. and Bruce County and yeah. Chatsworth area. Mm -hmm. We uh, looked in Ch Chatsworth hard. Yeah. We thought there was a couple of good ones in, in there, but they ended up not being the right one. Mm -hmm. Um, we wanted to stay near, because I was working at the pig barn at the time, we wanted to stay near. They had 11 barns in the south. Mm -hmm. They requested that I stayed in, in that area. But circumstances and, and things like that. Well, your heart attack had a lot to do with that. I, we just needed to get out of that industry. We needed to get out of the hog market yes, business. Yes, I had a heart attack. And that kind of pushed it that I couldn't do those anymore and I couldn't do those things anymore. So we found, where was it? We were, why, why, I don't remember how we started Googling up here. Um, actually it was the farm that we almost got scammed on. So we, we found out about Thessalon and then we started looking around Thessalon when we, when we found out it was a scam and then we found this place. And we looked at probably a hundred farms, guys. Easy, um, ranging from fifty acres to three. Yeah, like a house on it, no house on it. Gonna have a trailer. Well, the one house we looked at had six bedrooms, five bathrooms, and I was like, "What are we gonna do with this house when we're three 65? properties on yeah. one lot?" Yeah, like three three houses on, on one one lot. One lot. We looked at that. So you kind of have to, we, we kind of had to look at the future, mm -hmm. I guess, is the easiest way. And honestly, this is, for us, the best decision we ever made. It was a very hard decision because we literally left everybody yeah. we know. We know, well, we did know not a soul up here. Yeah. So it, it can get pretty lonely. Like, it can. It was, it was bittersweet to sign this paper. It was the closing of my life in at my mom and dad's house. It was uh, it was just a lot of emotional um, stuff going on at that time too. Yeah. My mother's death and and, and everything Louise. to do with that. Hmm? Louise, you signed the papers, Louise. Yeah, you know. um, his mother passing away. Like it was just a lot. It was a lot. It was very stressful. Very stressful, but that's why why we chose the north. It's economical to live up here. You can buy a nice piece of property for a good deal. Well, not so much anymore because everybody is coming up here. Yes. But um, we actually have friends looking in our area, so that's fantastic. We're super excited about that. Um, 
but yeah, that's why, why we chose this property. It's something that we can maintain ourselves because even if we don't grow out, um, the forest will be the forest and that's it. We own it. Nobody can go on it. So that's just how we kind of look at it. Mm -hmm. And the house is all on one floor. Yep. Um, there's no stairs. There's no, yeah, there's no nothing that can pull us out of our home early, I guess. This is where we differ. Mm. Acres. How many do we have? 27. 26.99. Yeah, whatever. We do not it's have that point zero one. <laughs> well, whatever. Our deed says 26.99. Okay. We do not have that not point one. Okay. Doesn't matter. You used to round up all the time. Yeah, it's pretty much 27. <laughs> it's like a quarter of an eight. It's like a quarter of an acre that we don't have. Um, chickens. How many do we have? Too many. Breeds. How many breeds of chickens do we have? No, what breeds do we have? Oh, good God. Oh. Julian and Junior are what we call a mine. They're a mixed breed. A Be mixed nice. breed. It's a mixed breed. It's, you can't, it has the definitive of one breed, but also the definitive of another breed. Then we have Blue Jays Giants. Mm -hmm. We got Ams. Am Seminis. Savant Honas. Mm -hmm. um, Rhode Island Reds. I have uh, mine are all the little ones. I have the wee littles. That's what I call them. Um, a lot of them are like Cochins because they're great brooders. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's four or five Cochins. Yeah, we have four or five co Cochins. We have a Silky. We have, what's Ewok? Ewok's a Silky. Ewok's a Silky. Um, Appenzellers. Yeah, Appenzellers, Spitz and Hobbins. And I think that's... Appenzellers mixed with an e, uh, Easter Egg. Oh, Easter Eggers. Yeah, we have a couple of Easter Eggers. Um, we have a standard size coaching. Mm -hmm. We have some, some Brahmas. Yeah, we have two Brahmas. Two Brahma girls. Yeah. Because our Brahma male got killed by a fox. He was fighting it off. Yeah. Um, ducks, we ha only have Muscovies, Cayugas, and one uh, Welsh Charlie Cole. Mm -hmm. Then we have our third case. Mm -hmm. So the turkeys are, my, are mine. Um, I have Royal Palms, Red Bourbons, Blue Slate. Negaset. A Negaset and a couple wild ones. Yeah. That aren't true wild. No, but they're they're from the red bourbon line. Yes. And they just come out looking like a wild turkey. We've almost had them shot I don't know how many times. Yeah. And we have one pheasant buddy. Yeah, we have one pheasant. Mm-hmm. Easiest turkey dress. Uh, we differ with this. I think it's a royal palm. I say it's because we it's haven't a red hatched bourbon. a royal palm yet. Mm -hmm. We've hatched a red bourbon multiple times. I say it's red bourbon, but you gotta do it correctly. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. If you do not have a chicken with them and have them segregated, they will not grow. And the other thing with if, if you're raising a turkey, you got to make sure those legs are warm all the time. Yep. If their legs or their their toes get cold, they will die within minutes. Oh yes. It's a it's a it's a fine line. Um, turkeys are very hard at the beginning stages of life. They're extremely hard to keep alive. But once you have it down, it's easy. You're good to go. The the heat mats underneath a brooder it it'll save it'll save you with the, with the heat lamp. Yeah. That'll save you. If, if you want to get into turkeys, turkeys are the, the, are not easy. They're fun. They're, they're pers it's when their personalities come out. Yeah. It's really fun. But that's like the chickens or the ducks. Mm -hmm. With turkeys, they take 28 days to hatch. On the 7th or 8th day, put in that chicken egg Yeah. to hatch. Because that chicken needs to be old, it needs to be hatched before they are. Yeah. So, so that they can Because turkeys do not know how to eat on their own. They're not like a chicken. 
Sorry, guys. If you guys hear snoring, it's our pug. Yeah, that's Boo Boo. That's Boo Boo. He is snoring like crazy. He's old. He's like 18. Um, one thing you want to grow, you want to raise, or or grow. Mm. Raise. Mm. I don't know. For me, it's a Dexter cow. Yeah, you want a cow. He, they're like three, four feet tall, but they're the same size as a regular cow, like weight-wise. So they're easier to handle, and they're just loving. To grow, to raise, I I really don't know. I. I thought I wanted to do goats, but you know what? I really don't want to do goats now. So, like, as as you get through this process, a lot of times your plan, your mental plan, will absolutely change. Because yeah. we said we were going to get sheep. Yeah, we, we were, were going to get, get sheep, and we were going to get lambs, and we were going to do this. You um, know what? When you break it down. Nigerian every, dwarf. Na yeah. Um, for milk. We were going to do so much, and you know what? It all comes down to you got to base your time. And... If we st and cost like these animals do not eat for free. Homesteading is not free. Well, pig feed in our area is sixteen forty nine to twenty two, depending fifth, on where we go. Yeah, depending on where we go, that's a fifty pound bag that can go in three days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we don't we don't underfeed our animals. We actually probably overfeed quite a bit. Probably, but. Because like a, a chicken should only be fed a quarter cup of feed a day. Yep. Well, if that's like never gonna happen on my farm because like I'm sorry, but I am not. You know what? Sixteen dollars they can be fed, but they don't free free range like they used to in our other farms. Yep. So our neighbors wouldn't like it. No, my our, our neighbors would get very upset yep. if we free ranged. Now every once in a while a guinea will get out or whatever, but they're getting yeah, used to them. Uh, what's the next one? Um, I'm just going off of what I what we've been asked in the past. Mm. Um, favorite thing to cook? Mm. Favorite thing to cook? You uh, love cooking barbecued steak. I like the barbecue. He doesn't touch the barbecue. That's my barbecue. Um, As you can tell, she loves cooking. Um. My favorite thing to cook is probably Italian. If you wanted to break it right down. Pasta. Which makes Michael very happy. It does. I love I love spaghetti, lasagna, mac and cheese. Anything to do with pasta. I'll wake up at midnight and just make noodles and put ketchup on it. Or <laughs> put cheese on it and just say, so be done. Why do you not like bacon? Why do I not like You've bacon? You've actually been asked this and yeah, you avoided it. I, uh, I you avoided that question, it like, like the you plague. Avoid the plague. Okay, I can bake. I hate to measure. It drives me absolutely batty. Like when I create recipes, I have to be focused on how much I'm putting in. Um, but baking, baking and I, unless it's a pie. A pie I can bake all day long. But you ask me, no, no, I hate it. I absolutely hate baking. Friends of ours, I used to bake for them all the time, and you know what? I used to have to be in the mood. I absolutely hate to bake. I do it well, You're but really I hate it. Up. I hate the measuring. And so many bowls. My lord. Like, <laughs> ugh. The dishes, the measuring. Oh, I hate it all. I hate it all. I miss my dishwasher. One thing you got asked the other day, and you avoided it. What's that? How many spices do you have in your cupboard <gasps> right now? How many spices? Yes. Oh yeah, I forgot about that question. Um, you got asked a couple times and you avoided it. I prop. This is gonna sound so snobbish. In the in the caning room, we actually, if you guys don't know, Prime Day was the other day and they had spices, on, on, spices sale. on sale. You bought fifteen different big packs of spices. Fifteen. But in that spice cupboard, I would say you have 20 to about 30 oh, I more than that. different kind of spices. But like that's stuff I, that I've seen. Yeah, that you even know about. That I even know about. You um, kind of buy spices when I'm going to get my things. I probably have, I don't know. It's 
more than 50. Problem. Easy. Problem. I should ask Diane this question. My best friend Diane actually put away my spice cupboard once. Yes, but you've expanded it. Oh, I've expanded it since then, but she always laughed at me because I kept dropping the spice boxes in front of her. Um, I don't know. I have some, like, I have ev everything, guys, from literally black salt to uh, smoke salt to... To, uh... We just got Mexican oregano. Mexican, yeah, I got Mexican oregano. I, I don't know. I would I would go 50 to 80 different spices. Easy. May, just, maybe more. So I don't know. Justify. I don't know. Because I like to experiment with new things. And I hate boring. I And I cook a lot of ethnic foods, too. We, I, we eat a lot of Mexican. We eat a lot of Italian. Italian. You don't correct me. Oh, I hate that. Uh... We're born born in Italy. They're born in Italy. I wasn't Italy. born in the States either. But <laughs> you sound like it. Um, what's the favorite? What's your favorite thing I cook then? You've seen my belly, right? <laughs> yes, I have. Uh, I, That's a question you got once before. I yes, and I avoided that like blind. I'd say homemade pizza mm. or panzerotis. Yeah, you do like panzerotis. And then we got asked, yeah, the last question was, how many dogs and cats do we have? We have Malachi, who's the protector of the household. Uh, he feels like he's the protector of the realm. Mm -hmm. We have Bella, who's the suck of all evil. Sucks. She's a black golden retriever. Have, she's right there. Yeah, she's right here. We have Boo Boo, the old man. We've had Boo since we started dating. Yeah. We've had him a long time. And then y'all know about Kiba. Mm -hmm. And then we have four cats. And then we have four cats. And we have one bunny. Cody has one bunny. I hate that bunny. She bites. But. Anything you change? About what? Our lifestyle. Oh. Other than no. having more roosters put up in the house. No, I think I got I got <laughs> enough research. Um, no, I don't think so. No. Faster pace. I would like a bigger kitchen. Faster pace. Mm. We live in a very slow paced area. Yeah, it takes a long time to get anything. Eh, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Expensive. There there are things that are, are very expensive up here. But then you counterbalance that with your life, so you have a you have a better lifestyle up here. I would strongly recommend anybody if they wanted to move to Northern Ontario, it is definitely worth it. It is definitely worth it. Except when you go through a protest. Oh yeah. You're in a car for over an hour and a half, and you get two feet. Going forty-five minutes away. <laughs> One thing that we did not mention is we forgot it in our homestead preparation for winter. Oh my oil lamps? Oh, oil lamps. I have a, I'll try to take a picture of it guys and we'll put it in here. Um, I have oil lamps from literally my great grandmother all the way down to my mom. Ones that I have got from my mom for like Christmases. It's an entire curio cabinet full of oil lamps. And it's overflowed to our cupboard over here. Yeah, I, I have a lot of them. But you know what? They come in handy when you don't have hydro. Uh, I'll try to take a picture of them so you guys can see them all. Maybe I have some really pretty ones. Maybe it'll be at the cupboard photo. Of the... I don't ask. <laughs> but anyways, guys, those were the questions we got. Yeah, those are I the hope we answered questions. them okay. Um, it, it's hard for us to answer them because, like, we we do this because we love the lifestyle. We've thought about in the past stopping our lifestyle and going back to a city and making it a little bit easier that way instead of driving an hour away. But we love our lifestyle and we will we'll fight for it any way we can. Mm -hmm. Now, it comes with problems. It comes with stresses. It comes with the problematics of the lifestyle. But if you have the right partner 
and you have the right backbone from that partner, it will work perfect. You have to have ambition to do this. You, you absolutely have to have the gonads to get up in the morning and say, okay, I need to work for the next 12 hours. And, but after that 12 hours, you need to process all these tomatoes and keep going and going and going. And sometimes, you know, like I'm literally going from 5.30 in the morning till midnight. And then it's like, you know, you got to get up at four the next day. So if you don't have that kind of inner ambition, then this lifestyle is not for you. And the number one thing is if you go into this lifestyle and you go, I want to homestead, I want to raise my own meat, I want to raise my own chickens, make sure you are zoned yeah. for sad things. We we live in an unorganized area, so we don't, we don't, and we live in the country. We are actually the only farm on this road. Yeah. So, um, unorganized just means there's no township. And our taxes are like stupidly I can, short. <laughs> I can build a four roomed house on our property and they can't say anything about it. That's what unorganized mm -hmm. is. Like, we don't even have garbage pickup. No. But I miss <laughs> my wheelie bin. <laughs> so make sure you're zoned for it and make sure you're allowed to. Yes, the old saying, ask for forgiveness instead of permission. But you don't want to spend that time raising a chicken for 16 weeks and then all of a sudden somebody walks up and goes, well, too bad, you're not zoned for this. Mm -hmm. That could become really pro problematic. So you have to get rid of every single one of them and you've grown that bond because you've seen them grow. So make sure you're zoned for it. Make sure you have the ambition. Gotta have ambition and, and don't think it's free. No, do not. Like, like, homesteading is very expensive. You is, you can do, you know, side cuts if you can, like, you know, grow grow your own feed and everything. But mm -hmm. still, that all still costs money. Then you need a tractor, and then you need a combine, and then you need all this other stuff. So, um, this lifestyle is not cheap. You can. It is not cheap. Or you can go, you can get the dual-purpose chickens and raise them for meat and you're saving in that way but make sure you have and you definitely want to do it don't walk into it going i'm gonna do it and then give up like, go slow and research oh research 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 like i we, we have stacks of books and we actually traveled to different farms when we started looking at different breeds of chickens because we have chickens I don't care what anybody says, chickens are the gateway animal to yes. anybody. Because yes. once you get a chicken, you're like, oh, I can handle a goat, and then I can handle a lamb, and then I can... Handle a pig. You know, like, um, it, chickens are the gateway animal of all time. Yes. Like, seriously. So, because once you get one chicken, you want to go get another one. Yes. It's almost like a tattoo. Once you get one, you need about 60 more. They yes. don't call it chicken math for nothing. No. So, but definitely do your research because if you have a small little hobby farm, maybe a bantam chicken is better than a, like a big breed like a Barama or a, a Jersey Blue Jersey Giant. Giant or Because my Jersey Giants are bigger than our dog. Yeah. So, um, you know, just those kind of things. And research your area. Because um, if you're buying, yeah, you can sell it. But do you really want to sell it once you've put all this money and effort into one place? We hated moving. Yes. Hated moving. But we always had to move for the bigger barn, for the bigger this, for the bigger that. And now we don't need to do that. Um, we have enough acreage that... If we want to expand, we can. We, yeah. And we will expand over the next five, five, five years, but it's going to take us time. Yes. So you can't do everything in one year. There will be expansions of the flock because you always need to rejuvenate your flock. But will it be the way we want? Who knows? Stay tuned. Yeah. Like we have one chicken out there, guys, and she's six years old. And she still lays eggs. So we call her the OG because she is nasty. You <laughs> original gangsta, <laughs> but, but make sure you're willing to do the grueling work. You're gonna go to bed sore, and you're gonna wake up sore. There's nothing better than going to bed sore, sore and, and tired. Extremely tired. Just make sure you're in it for the right reasons. Mm. We've seen too many people go in for the wrong reasons, 
And then they're like, I can't do it. So they drop everything, either side of the road or just open the door and say, I can't go be free. Mm -hmm. We've seen that plenty We've seen of that times. Plenty. And it just, as somebody they that, always end up at our house. Yes. As somebody that really cares for this lifestyle, it breaks my heart every time. Like our friends literally think, other than the set of friends, Bob and Becky, that are moving up here, they probably think we are half, half of a lunatic. Um, like my best friend, Diane, she was born and raised in the country, but she's like, you people are crazy. Like She can't do it. She, well, she could do it. She's she just afraid. doesn't, she doesn't want to do it. She's she afraid of my chickens. Yeah. She doesn't like her. She loves to watch our chickens. She, she's afraid of birds. So, but I mean, that's inevitable, but you know, but make sure you're in it for the right reasons. Yeah. Because it's a lot of work. It is this lifestyle is not easy, cheap, um, very taxing. Yeah, like canning season. I am stressed out the entire canning season. Like I mean, stressed out. Am I gonna get enough of this? Am I gonna have enough of that? And like, there's probably six thousand to seven thousand jars canned this year alone. So, and I'm still not done. So, you know, it takes. It takes a toll on you. You do. You don't want your burnout, and I always burn myself out because I am a workaholic. So, <laughs> is all. I think so. And if you guys have any other questions, do not hesitate to leave them in this video. We kind of just went off on a tangent. We always do. But um, this was a requested video, so this has been requested for a while. Yeah, we just kept on pushing it off. Well, because. Um, life. Life and today it's snowing. It's trying to. It's trying to snow, so. It's trying to snow, snow. We wanted to do this actually in the outdoor kitchen, but. It's too cold. Well, it's not too cold, but. We're minus something. Right now. We're minus two right now, so. Celsius. Celsius. <laughs> but, anyways. I don't, don't ask me Fahrenheit, I'm not American. I don't know. I'm sorry, guys, we don't know. We're I close think. enough to the border, I should learn, but. Yeah, we're only an hour away from Michigan. But yeah, any other questions about our lifestyle, about what we think, about anything like that? You guys know we try to answer every every question in the comments. But if you guys wanted to do another <laughs> video, really boo boo. Uh, we can just we want to make sure we have a bunch of questions before yeah. instead of doing like a three minute video with four questions. We don't like that because then that's pointless. Well, it's a waste of your, your time and we don't want that. No, we hate wasting your time. <clears throat> so hit the bell, hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to a thousand. Oh guys, the giveaway. She's already figured lordy, it out. Lordy, lordy. Okay, I, I you have just no got idea. rid of these stupid cutting boards. Okay, I, I, and she's already got what she's got for the thousand. Yep. Guys. Help me out here in the comments. <laughs> Tell her to comment down below. You wait, guys. You wait. It's a big one. It's humdinger, as she would say. Yep, it's... But it's one of my most one. favorite things in the whole wide world. Me? No. Damn it. <laughs> You're <laughs> expensive. <laughs> Hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Hit the like button so we know. You guys know. Hit the bell so you guys can see when we're uploading. I think you have a canning video out this week. Apple pie filling. Um, I'm going to try to have a home setting one I got figured out. If uh, we don't get the rain. We're going to do the, uh, when you go get the straw tomorrow. That straw tomorrow. Then we have a bunch of bales of hay coming next week. Yeah. So that might get pushed till next week. Because I have 45 bales. So I'm going to be doing a winter coop. Prepping. Prepping. Cause that's like a whole different, whole different thing, and that's a whole different video. That's about three hours of work and a lot of lugging. Yeah. So you guys will see that next week, hopefully. Cross your fingers, my shipment comes in. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's it for the videos planned right now. Mm -hmm. You never know what pops up on the board. We may have a surprise one. You may not. That's why you want to hit that bell. Mm-hmm, because you never know what I'm going to do. Never know what Tracy's going to do. I got more canning videos coming up for you guys next week. Yeah, never know what's going to find out, pop up on the farm. That's true. And you never know what I'm going to buy. Quite <laughs> Could be four legs, it could be two. 
No more animals this season. Let's He's go. He's done. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us today, and we will see you super soon. Bye.